There has been a huge increase in what we call modern day slavery. Human trafficking brings in close to $150 billion a year. Traffickers view big events as an opportunity to profit by the sale of another human being. There is a generation at risk that doesn't even realize the danger that they're being lured into. I'm Thomas Morstead, punter for the New Orleans Saints. Across this country, there's something sinister lurking, human trafficking. The trafficking of women and men, mostly women, uh, for sex trafficking and labor trafficking. Uh, it is a scourge, it is the commodification of human life, uh, turning people into something that they, you know, they can be exploited, and it's on an exponential rise worldwide. In the U.S., we've defined human trafficking in two main categories. There's sex trafficking, and then there's labor trafficking. For sex trafficking, if you're under 18 and involved in any kind of commercial sex or transactional sex, that's human trafficking. If you're trading sex for anything, we've determined that if you're under 18, you, don't, you aren't old enough to make that decision for yourself. You know, your brain's still developing, so we need to make sure to protect our kids against being trafficked. Now, if you're over 18, if you're being forced into it through violence or through manipulation, if somebody's tricking you through fraud or saying, you know, this is a false passport or we can get you this or we can get you that, or if somebody's creating a whole world around you saying, you, this is your only option to sell sex, that's sex trafficking. With labor trafficking, anytime you're forced, again, through violence or through other ways, anytime you're tricked through fraud saying, promising one thing and not delivering it for your job, or through coercion, meaning we're going to manipulate your whole life to be able to make this your only option, that's labor trafficking. Human trafficking, uh, unfortunately, is very, very common in New Orleans, uh, particularly the city of New Orleans, but some of the outlying areas as well. Not only does it take place with some regularity in some parts of the French Quarter and beyond, but whenever we have large events here, like several years ago with the Super Bowl, uh, every year when we have the Sugar Bowl, and when they are Mardi Gras would be another example, uh, this becomes a focus point for human trafficking. Where people are victimized through labor trafficking can be restaurants, domestic servants. Oftentimes people, especially foreigners, are brought into the country and end up working in, domestic, you know, in homes as housekeepers, forced to work there that way. Uh, beauty establishments, salons, you know, nail shops, you know, things like that. Can't forget about construction workers, farm workers. So it is happening all over. We recently had Loyola University do a study of our young people here at Covenant House. And what they found was that about 14% of our young people have been involved in sex trafficking. And if you include the sex industry and the strip joints here in New Orleans, then the number would climb to about 25%. What that means is in a typical year, I will see a minimum of 87 young people who have been sex trafficked. If I include strip joints, the sex industry, and the trafficking together, it's over 150 young people, females and males, who have been involved in our sex industry. When we think about the sphere of human trafficking, I think from a law enforcement perspective, it's safe to say that nothing would surprise us. The people that are doing this oftentimes exploit those that are most vulnerable by exploiting the children, by exploiting women who are very vulnerable, by exploiting workers who are not getting a just wage and promising them a greater job in our country or another country. Playboy philosophy uh, has unleashed, again, this sense of entitlement uh, that is very strong in our society and, and pornography has exploded on the internet and we're finding uh, Backpage and these other uh, you know, uh, vehicles on the internet are increasingly being used uh, to sell 
young girls and women and even young boys. Social media is used by traffickers to recruit victims. They will look for a young girl who's complaining about her parents, who's talking about running away, who is looking for a boyfriend, and any adolescent teenage girl looking for love could potentially become a victim through social media. We also find that many of the victims were uh, abused uh, physically or mentally as a child. And so this is kind of the next iteration of that abuse. Runaways of all sorts are particularly susceptible to human trafficking. Traffickers can find them in bus stations and on the streets in 48 to 72 hours. But when these girls run away, there's somebody out there. There's, a, there's somebody uh, to victimize them. There's a predator out there that's willing to say, she needs somebody and I'm gonna be that person. Think of the victim, think of the consequences to that young girl or young woman. It should be all about protection. And among the most weakest and most vulnerable today are these trafficking victims. My girls range from 12 to 17. Um, and the predominant number of them um, have been out of school for two or three years because they've been running the streets. And so a lot of what we do is trying to say, let's see who you are, and they lose, they lose hope, they lose worth, they lose self-esteem. Who are these young women that are either stripping or uh, lending, you know, being forced into, into prostitution? Uh, that's gotta end. You know, th these are young women made in the image and likeness of God and we have to have total respect. Just because we don't see those who are in modern day slavery doesn't mean that they're not there. And we need to open our eyes and to see them where they are and then to reach out and help them whenever we can. And I do call all of you to action. Uh, we certainly must make this issue known to our legislators and to others. Uh, we also must start talking about it on the parish level and in our schools and in our youth groups. We are finally tackling this problem. Um, and that it is a community response and a response as a nation and as a response as a world, right? I mean, you have the Holy Father speaking about human trafficking and saying we need to put that on the top of our agenda, not at the bottom. So we as a community, and I will say this as a Christian community, we can gather around these young adults and we can inform them of not only the evils that are out there, but how to guard themselves. The internet is not a very safe place. And I think every parent needs to have that talk, not once, not twice, but multiple times with their young daughters and sons uh, about being on the internet uh, and, and the, the risk of being lured into a situation uh, that could cause irreparable damage and even death. Be engaged with understanding who are, who is my child speaking with um, by being engaged in being concerned if they see unusual behavior, uh, a drastic personality change in their child, inappropriate dress, uh, possibly some things that may seem innocent like tattooing that just looks like that's not my child. A lot of people say, what can we do? A lot of individuals, maybe you're not an expert in trafficking, maybe you're not a social worker or a lawyer or a police officer. Maybe you just encounter a situation where your red flags are going off and you're saying, this doesn't look right. I encourage you to keep your eyes open, keep your ears open. When you go into a restaurant, when you go into a bar, into a club, when you go to a construction site, you know, keep your eyes open. On, on the surface, it, they may not seem like victims, they may not seem that they are being trafficked, but listen to what they say. Listen to the uh, hints, you know, are they being forced to be there? Are, are, have documents been taken away from them? Uh, are they able to go freely at any time, you know, on the time they're not at the work site? You know, those type of things we must pay attention to. There was a young woman that worked at a truck stop in Louisiana and she um, had looked on Facebook before she went to work and there was a post by a television show and this television show said that there was a young woman that was missing 
It was through missing and exploited children. And so this young woman looked and she looked at all of the facts and everything and then the young woman went ahead and she went to work. And little did she know that that evening, that young woman that had been kidnapped, she was a teenager, came to the truck stop and she recognized her. She went ahead and she called 911. She called the sheriff's office and the sheriffs responded immediately and that young woman was saved. Victims need to know that there is hope for them, that the way that they've been treated is not who they are, and that they can be seen again as people with dignity and a future. There's a lot of work to recover that we all need to help them with. That includes mental health support, that includes housing, that includes jobs and wraparound job training. Those are all elements that we can all join together and support those survivors of trafficking. Many times, our feet may not be able to go where our prayers can, and everybody can pray. To learn the facts about human trafficking, please visit polarisproject.org. If you know of or suspect human trafficking, please call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-3737-888.